So what is the difference between a combination and a permutation question? Uh, I see this is used quite a bit uh, interchangeably on the GMAT exam. You don't really need to know verbally what the difference is, but you do need to know when to use combination and when to use permutation. So I'm going to go through an example here where you're basically having the same question, but in one case you use combination, but the other case you use permutation. And so just as an example, um, let's say you have six people and you have to pick any two. You could pair them off. So it could be um, there are six people, the first and the second can pair up, the first and the third can pair up, first and the fourth can pair up. Um, so that's a combination. That's when order does not matter. So when I said the first person pairs with the second person, um, you know, that counts as one. Now, in the case of permutation, that same question where you're picking out of six, you pick two, um, the question might be worded a little bit differently. So each person would have some kind of unique identifier. So for example, let's say each person had a number on their t-shirt and they were numbered one, two, three, four, five, six. And somebody was writing on a sheet of paper, you know, if you pair any two people, what number do you create? So if you, if you pair up number one and number two, well that creates one number, 12. But then if you swap those two people and the two goes in front of the one, um, it's still the same pair of person, but you, you swap the two and the one, then you get 21. So obviously 12 and 21 are two different numbers. So in that case, you count the order does matter. And so you're actually going to get more possibilities with a permutation worded question where you have each item has like some kind of unique identifier uh, versus a combination you'll get less possibilities because order does not matter um, the one and the two and the, the first and the second person um, it doesn't matter if it's first and the second and then or if it's second and the first it's still the same pair of people so let's go go through this example right here um, basically we're saying we treat one with two the same as two with one that counts as one combination and in the permutation case where you're giving each person a, a unique identifier then this counts as two different combinations so let's look at the formula so the popular formula is some people call it NCR for combination NCR and then for permutation P you use NPR um, N is in this case 6 um, R is 2 so out of out of n you choose r so you kind of do n choose r 6 choose 2 so out of 6 you choose 2 um, in this case uh, the same formula the only difference is you remove this r factorial so whatever this pick 2 you remove the 2 factorial you remove the 2 factorial but you still keep the other guy the other guy is so in this case 2 factorial is the r the n minus r is 6 minus 2 which is 4 4 factorial so you still have to keep the 4 factorial over here um, but the formulas look exactly the same the only difference is you remove um, this r factorial on the denominator for permutations so here it is you remove the r um, and it looks almost exactly the same and the difference again is you remove this 2 factorial on the permutation side so this turns out when you multiply it out. Factorial just means you multiply every digit all the way down to 1. Uh, so 6 factorial is just 6 times 5 times 4 times 2 times 2 times 1. And then you could write this out and write this out. Um, and the same goes here. And obviously you're missing the 2 factorial. So you just have this. And obviously these cancel out. The 4 factorials. Like inside the 6 factorial you kind of have a 4 factorial in there and you're just left with the two top ones, six times five. And then you keep the two here, but you don't have the two here. And then um, you just multiply it out. Obviously you get uh, 30 over two, which is 15 here, but then you get 30 here. So in this case, how many permutations are there? NPR, you get 30. NCR with the combination, you get 15. So looking at this, you can tell that the number of possibilities with combinations is generally less than the number of possibilities you get with permutations. 
So again, that's the difference between combinations and permutations. You can have the same question worded just a little bit differently. If you have six people, you choose any pairs, the first and the second, the first and the third. Um, you can count them and eventually you get to 15. That's when the order does not matter and that's called, per, uh, that's called combination. And you can word the same question differently by saying, well, each person is actually numbered and that order does matter because one, two is different from do, two and one. So that'll give you two different combinations. In that case, uh, you make sure you calculate it by removing the R factorial on the bottom and you'll get a permutation. And that permutation will lead you to a larger number and therefore combinations is generally less than permutations.